Hello YouTube, I'm Crispy Charizard, and this is Pokemon 101. This week I'll be discussing the 18 Pokemon types, and their personal pros and cons for me. If you disagree with my opinions, that's completely fine. For those of you unfamiliar with type damage calculation, a Pokemon's types determine how much damage it receives from an attack. If it's weak to an attack, it receives double damage. If it's immune to an attack, it receives no damage. And if it resists an attack, it receives half damage. If both of its typings are weak to an attack, it receives quadruple damage. And if both of its types resist the attack, it only receives quarter damage. If there is no interaction between the attack and the Pokemon, it receives basic damage without a multiplier. Now, the normal type for me is not the greatest type. Sure, they have only one weakness, and they even have an immunity. But with zero resistances and zero stabs on other types, that is, same type attack boost, because no other type is weak to the normal type, I don't see the point of me using a normal type most of the time. Having an immunity is great, and only one weakness is also great. And also, some Pokemon of the normal type are very bulky, but to me, these aren't worth it when it comes to their weaknesses. Of course, the fire type is much better. I would use the fire type because even though it has three weaknesses, it has six resistances, and they're very powerful when it comes to their special attacks. I can usually find room for a fire type on my team. Now, the water type is really great. They used to be my all-time favorite type. With only two weaknesses and four resistances, they are very, very powerful. And they're very common, so having a water type on a team is usually a must. The electric type is another great type. Having an electric type on your team is almost always a must. They only have one weakness, and they also have three resistances. Using an electric type is really, really good. So I love using electric types. Now, the Grass type is another type that I'm not a fan of. With five weaknesses and only four resistances, they've never been worth it for me. Personally, I can't use Grass types. Not if I can help it. Although they have some pros, I try to avoid them. Now, the Ice type is a very tricky one to judge. When I used to do very complicated calculations to find the best and the worst types, I found that Ice type is the weakest of all the types. But on the other hand, it is very unique in that it is effective on very strong types, as well as pretty powerful in certain aspects. Now, one bad thing about ice types is that they only have one resistance and that's to ice which says something about them and they have four weaknesses personally i like using ice types because they're just so cool but it's risky so i can use ice types but i try not to now the fighting type is one of the all-time strongest types but that's probably because their attacks are super effective against so many other types. Now the Pokemon themselves, they have three weaknesses and three resistances. So overall, they're not the most special. But most fighting types have such strong physical attack and such great moves. And such an overall cool appearance that I almost always try to find a fighting type to use. But not as much as, say, water or fire or electric types. Overall, I love fighting types a lot. Poison types are pretty tricky, again. They can do things that other types can't. And with only two weaknesses and five resistances, they're actually pretty strong. After the fairy type was introduced, they became really popular. But personally, they don't appeal to me. So, I try to avoid them sometimes because they're not one of my favorites. Now, the ground type is actually a great type. They only have two resistances, but they have only three weaknesses as well, and they also have an immunity to electricity. 
Now, since electricity's only weakness is ground, having a ground type is probably very, very useful. In fact, a team without a ground type isn't as balanced as it could be. So, I usually try to find a ground type for my team, if I can. Ground types are some of the best Pokemon. Now, the bad thing about the flying type is that if someone's going to use them, it's probably just so they can use the HM fly. Hopefully, after that's discontinued in Sun and Moon, and being replaced by Pokemon rides, like Charizard, being used to glide for free around the region. I predict that the flying type will be more taken advantage of to its full potential. With three weaknesses, three resistances, and one immunity, the flying type is surprisingly great. Many people love the flying type. In fact, it's hard not to have more than one flying type on a team, which has happened to me before. But for the sake of balance, one is enough. They're pretty great, but not the best. Now, the Psychic type is not one of my favorites. It has lots of strengths about it, and back in Generation 1, it was actually broken that it was so strong. It was way stronger than it should be. But right now, it has three weaknesses and two resistances. So, personally, I don't use them a lot. In fact, I'm not even sure why I use them so rarely, because they're actually really cool. But, I guess, I don't know, but they don't appeal to me as much as to other people. But there are some pretty strong aspects to them as well. Now, the bug type has its strengths, but I don't use them. I don't like bug types. Or bugs. Three weaknesses, three resistances. Pretty basic. Yeah, the idea of bugs in general, I rarely use them. Although, I guess they're very useful in some cases. Now, some people say the Rock type is the most defensive type, but I beg to differ. They have five weaknesses and four resistances. So, having five weaknesses is actually really bad. So, while Rock type attacks are almost always necessary on your team, the Pokemon themselves, you can do without. I try to avoid using them. Now, the Ghost type is unique in that they're so rare but usually ignored. They're probably one of the best types, and the fact is that I rarely use them by accident. I forget how great they are. I really should always have a ghost type on my team. They have two weaknesses and two immunities and two resistances. Those two immunities make it very, very unique in that no other type, of course, has two immunities. The ghost type is a very special type indeed. You should probably always have a ghost type on your team. Now the dragon type is another one of those tricky types. They look powerful and they are powerful and they have great stats and they're usually pseudo legendary or legendary. They have three weaknesses and four resistances. Now those resistances are great and three weaknesses is not a lot but dragon type attacks they're not strong against anything other than other dragon types. If you want to use a Pokemon that is pretty resistant or bulky or really offensive and that it's very powerful, then dragon types are pretty good. But the truth is that using them might not be the best idea. To be honest, they're really great and I actually want to use them all the time. But I just have this feeling that they're not as strong as they're made out to be. So, even though I can't stay away from them, something about them just sometimes is risky to use. Now, the dark type is another one of those types that look cool. And I try to use them, even though you don't really have to. They have three weaknesses, two resistances, and one immunity. So overall, I think it's a pretty great type. Out of all the types, this is one of the ones that I consider very usable. Now the Steel type is my new all-time favorite type. The reason for that, you will see, is that they have 10 resistances. Not only is that the most resistances that any type has, 
but it is way more than any of the other types. Like, it's not even one more than the others, or two more than the others. It is ten resistances, which is probably a lot more than the others. I didn't even check. Now, with only three weaknesses, and even an immunity, those ten resistances, in my calculations, make the steel type the most defensive type, which makes it probably the most useful type. Because being resistant is important. Of course, speed is probably the most important stat. But steel is the strongest type when you only consider weaknesses. Steel types come in so many shapes and sizes. But they're just so defensive. And even though I don't always use them, I really should. Because they are really really strong sometimes not in the ways you want but those resistances come in handy because they are very very defensive they make the rock type look puny and finally the fairy type introduced in generation 6 with very mixed opinions from people they have two weaknesses an immunity to dragon no less and three resistances now they took a lot of pokemon from other types Sometimes halfway, sometimes completely. And overall, I probably shouldn't like them. Because, really, they don't appeal to me aesthetically. But, I like using fairy types for their strengths. Fairy types are stronger than they look. And I think that was the whole point, you know. Like, a power that you can't see on the outside. I mean, for dragon types. And... Types that are also weak to fairy, like dark and fighting. Fairy types are nightmares. They just make poison and steel type Pokemon even better. I'd like to say again that my opinions don't really matter. And that you're free to disagree with them. I don't even know why I made this video. But it was mostly for fun. And I'd like to remind y'all that next week I have a surprise video. Please like and subscribe. Thanks again.